Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. We're back today for Season 12 and we're back for a Champions League playoff match. And as you can see from the opponent at the top of the screen, it might well be heartbreak for the third year in a row. We've got a little bit unfortunate this year, but we'll try our very best and we'll reflect on all of that in a moment. We'll show the first leg in today's episode, the second leg and the end of the transfer window will be in the next episode too. So if you're looking forward to all of that, including a big transfer special, seeing how the other Welsh sides have got in in Europe and saying goodbye to a few of our former legends, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. We've also set some records already this season, both on and off the pitch. So if you want to stay up to date and see if we can break more this season, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts for daily videos from two long-term stories. Possibly the most incredible episode of Football Manager I'll ever make on a channel was yesterday's head coach episode. I'll put it in the eye above. If you haven't seen it yet, please do go over and give it a try because it was just astonishing on so many different levels. So I hope you enjoy that one. There's also links up there to our other playlists and the new food channel as well. And you can watch me live on Twitch regularly from FM21 streams all the way over to watch alongs for football matches too. And there's a link to that channel in the description below. So please do come and follow us and hopefully you'll have plenty of fun over there too. But let's start today by talking about both transfer market news, Welsh teams in Europe, and the fact that we've been playing our qualifiers and broken some records. You can probably see some of those on the screen here. We had a 13-0 aggregate win over B36 in the first qualifying round. And a 26-0 aggregate win in the second qualifying round against Dudelange. Who I think are from Luxembourg. They are. They did have a real player who's not very good. Which gives you an indicator as to how we managed that. But really remarkable, to be brutally honest. And we're going to have a look at that today. But let's start with transfers. Because we've got to know who these players are that have been involved early in the season. And we've got to say goodbye to a lot of legends. And that's the reason we're only showing one game today. We had agreed to sell Max Dean to both QPR and Lant. He's rejected both of those. And it is probably the one position we're still looking for a player. Unfortunately, Luke Williams rejected us. He signed a deal at Hertha Berlin for £40,000 a week. So we're not able to call on his experience this season. We have partly replaced him with one of those four signings there. However, I think what we said this summer is that in terms of the squad, we would have a big overhaul. We'd promote some youngsters, sign some squad players and get rid of a lot of those ageing legends. And we've done just that. Seven out so far with Max Dean possibly to follow. Cameron Badebo was the first of the bunch. £13,000 to Kilmarnock. A really good player for us for so many years. Produced brilliant performances in the league and in Europe too. And after 145 league games for us and many more in other competitions, we say goodbye to him. He's off to Kilmarnock and I hope he does well there, genuinely. A few lone players went out. We talked about those in the previous episode. Get as many out as early as possible in the window. Most of them going to top tier sides as well. It was followed by Elliot Andrew leaving for Wickham. 37 league games for us. It surprised me when I looked that in three and a half years, that's all he'd played in a league. Because most of the games where he'd come in had been League Cup and Cup matches. So he's actually played almost as many games in the domestic cups as he has in the league. And if you put in Europe as well, he's played more games in other competitions than the Welsh Premiership. So a bit of a weird one really. But a good goal scoring record, a really solid deputy. Never really had a stint as first choice by about two months when Max Dean was injured. But he's been a good servant, he's done a good job for us. And he leaves with our blessing. He's picked up a fractured toe already unfortunately. But I'm sure he'll be involved for Wickham in League One. Next up, possibly least surprising of the lot was Ben Cottrell. I mean, he was third choice last year between two youth players. And if he can't get ahead of those, he was never going to survive here. However, he's gone to Coventry and he's now playing championship football off the bench. So it's worked out quite well for him, hasn't it? Again, though, 134 league appearances for us. Some special moments in Europe. And he was one of those first sensational loan players that we had that then came and joined us permanently. So for Ben Cottrell, fond memories. But again... Just getting towards 30 and we decided to take the money and let him go. He had struggled with injuries more than most as well. And then after another lone play-up, four more left in relatively quick succession. We had Luca Cannell, who's gone to Dundalk for £9,500. For half a year at least, he'll be playing with Peter Holding, won't he? But again, reached the age of 30, fell out of favour last year. It was fifth choice in the end. And after 140 league appearances, after loads of special nights again, I know I'm repeating myself... But these guys have contributed so much. They're our first generation of Bangor City legends. 
I'm hoping we'll have another one from this lot that we've bought in before we finish the save. But Luca Cannell remembered fondly what a player he was. And we wish him all the best over in Ireland. Archie Woods goes to Motherwell, another one to Scotland. We haven't really replaced him as such as a backup holding midfielder. But quite often we play Cannell or Williams in the holding role instead of him. And although he was a brilliant servant for us, not there quite as long as the others, but did really well. And he did sort of get pushed out a bit by Harvey Lloyd being so good. He is going to be an excellent player still. And at 27, he's still in his peak. We wish him well for the future. Two more to go and probably the two that I'm saddest about to an extent in terms of the, what they could have offered our current team. Daniel Williams has gone to MK Dons for £10,000. 30 years of age, a Welsh player, an under-21 international. And even last season, we remember that free kick, don't we? The SPFL Trust Trophy final, he was the star. And again, he's done so many great things for this club. Not played quite so many league games, but arguably had the more big games in Europe where he produced on massive occasions. And he's a wonderful pro, so we wish him the best. You can see he's already flying in League One and the Carabao Cup. So at MK Dons, I hope he can be a real success, because I would have still had him involved this year. He wanted to leave, he wanted a new challenge, and it looks like, as he did with us, he's exceeding already. The final one is the biggest money one, £40,000 plus a 30% sell-on for Keegan Riley. A fantastic player for us, only 24 years of age. And really, he's victim to the fact that most of our good youth intake players have been right backs. We've got Gwyn Morgan ahead of him. We've got Kai McDonald on loan again, which is a spoiler for another signing. And he's just not part of the squad as a result. So Keegan Riley, he gets to earn big money at Pompey. He gets to start in the championship in England. And hopefully, now being worth 300 grand, he gets a big sell on as well. So there are all the outs, four ins to talk about and a couple more loan extensions as well. The first one is our like-for-like -like replacement for Luke Williams. We thought he might be a backup when we got him and he might still, given a loan player we're looking at. But Kresimir Loza from Osijek in Croatia. So shows that our scouts are branching out, shows that they're finding people from further afield. And this one was from a physical scout report, not from me asking the director of football, not from a playing a European qualifier, it was from a scout report. And this guy is very good. 19 caps for Croatia under 21s, 20 years of age, 4 grand a week, 3 star ability, 4.5 potential. He has scored 14 goals in 6 Champions League qualifiers, albeit against pretty poor opposition. And he just looks like he's going to be a superstar. He's got all the key attributes. And if we can take each of those up by one attribute point, he will then go from being a good young striker to a brilliant first teamer. And that's all we're looking for from him. So it'll be sort of rotation this year if we can get another loan striker in and Max Dean leaves the club. But if not, he's going to get a season to shine. And I wouldn't bank against him doing it. He's been a fantastic player so far. And it'll be a big test when he comes up against the bigger opposition. But looking ahead to the Welsh Premier League games, based on his Champions League form, I have to say I think he's going to be a star. He's joined by Dan Wells on loan from Sheffield United. He was one of three or four options we had in centre midfield. But he was the only one that we didn't have to contribute a wage to. So we're getting a season of this guy for free. He's four-star ability, four-star potential. Natural in the number 10, natural in centre mid. Centre mid is where he's going to play more of the time. He'll be alongside the likes of Chris Broom and Patrick Malone moving forward. Scott Furlong has stayed for another year as well. So it means that with Cannell and Williams leaving, we have really upgraded our backup team. And look at him. He's got a good personality. He's exceptional mentally. Technically, he's a wizard. He's over six foot, he's an imposing figure, and he likes to play good football. He's the sort of man I think is going to be a superstar. And again, four appearances, two goals and four assists. You can't ask for much more from him. Added to those though, a couple more permanent signings. The first one is more important than it looks from the start. Justin Burrows is a free transfer centre-half, 24 years of age, a former under-21 international. Good tackler, good positioning. Not the best player in the world, two-star ability, two-and-a-half potential, but can play anywhere across the back four and is two-footed. Now, as well as being an important backup player for us, Justin Burrows is homegrown in the Welsh nation. He completed his training at Swansea. So it means that from last year, where we were stuck with 19 players in the Champions League squad, he's a 20th. He's an extra backup, and we can't ask for more than that. So the benefit of looking for players homegrown in the nation as backup squad players, the, the value of promoting some of the youth players as well, means that we're going to have a bigger Champions League squad, despite having less players at the club overall. It helps the wage bill. He signed a tiny deal on 400 quid a week. And I just think it's a bargain. 
The final one, a bit more of a first team candidate, that man is Scott McKenzie. And basically, I was looking for a centre half. We'd obviously got a little bit shorter there, having lost out on Keegan Riley and Badebo, who moved on. So to be able to replace them with one player on a free agent deal who can contribute in all competitions is exactly what I wanted. He's 22, he's a Scottish under-21 international, he's got room to improve and a good personality to do so. If you look at his leadership, you might think he'll get even better in the future. And even since being here, he's improved already. So I can see him overtaking John Price soon. That will allow Price to be a backup centre-half and backup holding midfielder. And for us, we've got him on a one-year deal initially, so I'm trying to work him into the team gradually there. He's already played a game for Rangers. He's played over 50 for Aberdeen. He's got experience at a higher level. He's a good personality. I think he's going to be brilliant again. So we tried to sign real quality to improve the squad this summer. And although we've not completely done it, if we got Luke Williams, I would have said, yes, we're there. We also couldn't get a backup keeper. But apart from that, it is a real improvement to the whole squad. We've got rid of a lot of those legends. I've taken that step and got over the emotional hurdle. And we've brought in some young players on permanent deals that could be superstars for the future of Welsh football and for the future of Bangor City Football Club. So that's the good news in the club. Let's have a look at what it's done on the pitch. I mean, some of the most ridiculous outcomes I have ever seen. A 6-0 win at home to B36 in a first qualifier. A Walters hat-trick, two for Lowe's up, one for Scott Furlong, who, like Kai McDonald, has extended his loan. 3.4 grand a week for him. Into the second leg, we rested a fair few. Duffy got a goal off the bench. Loza got one. Kane Walters got four. And Chris Broom got one. Dudelange in the second qualifier, it was ridiculous. 13-0 in the first leg. John Price opened it. Five for Loza, five for Walters, one each for Wells and Malone. And in the second leg, I rested nearly everyone. And we did the same again. Walters got a hat-trick. Loza got five. Kyo Bulkley, the youngster from the youth intake last year, got a hat-trick. And then young defenders Pasiorek and Morgan got one each. Really positive there too. A 3-0 win away at Sheriff Tiras Bowl. A good win for us because Moldova is really competing around that 20th spot in European coefficients. So that's a big win for Welsh football as well as us. Game Walters got two. Joe Duffy got one. It did frustrate us for a large part of that game. But we were professional. We got the job done. The same can't be said against Connors Key in the League Cup. We always have problems with this competition. And they dragged us to penalties. They probably deserved to win it in the 90. But thankfully, George Ratcliffe made one save from the penalty spot. And we managed to score all five of ours. So we get through on penalties after a 0-0 draw there. A 6-0 win followed though against the Moldovans in the second leg of the third qualifier. Loza with one. Furlong, Wells and Broom all got a goal apiece too. And Kane Walters got two. He always scores goals. He's on 19 already this season. And then at home to Landudno, we rested everyone. But it didn't stop us winning. Dean, Duffy and Pasiorek with one apiece. We missed a penalty in that one as well. But no harm, no foul. And that leaves us with Galatasaray in the first leg of the playoff round. Going to be a very difficult match. They've got loads of experienced players from England. Loads of brilliant young Turks coming through. So they've got a regen goalkeeper who's now 26. They've got three or four great youngsters involved in the squad. And they've also got experience across the board. So Jason Malumbi, we managed him in the head coach this year. The likes of Odson Edward, Kelechi Iheanacho, Jordan Aina is going to be very difficult. However, we've got to reflect on the other Welsh sides involved in competitions. If we go to the Europa Conference to have a look at that, of course it was Swansea Met Uni, it was TNS and Barry Town United did win the qualifiers. And the first thing you'll notice here from the fourth qualifying round, the playoff, is that TNS are still in it. They've got AZ Alkmaar, I'd imagine it's going to be the last round they're in. But one of the Welsh sides has got through two qualifiers and made it to the playoff. That is a big, big plus for Welsh football. So first time around, TNS won 3-2 on aggregate against Bilis, Bilis of Albania. Now Barrytown United won against Sloven Bratislava. That's got to be a good sign for the future because they've got a good team, some decent youngsters. But Barrytown United won on away goals after two draws. Well done to them. Unfortunately, Swansea Met Uni couldn't back it up. They lost 7-0 to SKN St. Poulton. They're a decent Austrian team and they got good youngsters as well. So we can understand that, but the other two doing us proud and got through. In the next qualifier, you can see TNS drew the first leg. In the second leg though, if we have a look, Barrytown United got battered by the Swiss side Thun. They're a good team, so there's no doubt in that Barry were underdogs for that game, but a shame they lost by so much. TNS though, as we know, got through. They beat Stajnan 3-2 on aggregate. The Icelandic side, again, 
two and a half star reputation with good young footballers at the club, but TNS came out on top. They have got a couple of good loan players in this year, which we will have to watch out for. But that means TNS will face AZ Alkmaar for a place in the group stages of the Europa Conference. Now, it's very unlikely at this stage that will happen, but what an achievement, and that surely will boost the coefficient. So after a busy summer, we'll have a look at the Welsh transfer window when we get to the end of it in the next episode. But the last thing I want to look at before we get into the game is the coefficients, just to update you. Now, Wales are in 20th place, but more crucially than that, next season are due to jump above Serbia and are very close to Greece and the Czech Republic. Now, part of the reason for that is we've already got two and a half points this season from Barry and TNS progressing in theirs. And it shows what a difference it makes. So if we can have a good season ourselves... Maybe dropping into the Europa League is a good thing because we'll end up going through the rounds and hopefully getting more points on the board. But we're up to 20th place there. The qualification places, if we go to 19th, it doesn't change. But if we get to 17th, we get in a round later in the qualifiers. So that means that then we don't have as far to go. We get an extra week of pre-season to bring our players in. In terms of the leagues though, the most important thing of the summer is the Welsh Premier League went up 10 places to 42nd in the reputation. Two and a half star league now, only three places behind League One in England, ahead of the Scottish Championship, ahead of the Irish Premiership, the Irish First Division, and ahead of some of the other big leagues as well. It's really pushing towards the top now, and I'm hoping we can go above League One next season, because that will surely open up some transfer markets. So great news for the league off the pitch, and great news for the club off it as well. The board, without us even asking have agreed to expand the stadium. They came to us about a week after the last episode and said we're going to expand it to 5,100. So maybe we'll be able to host our own European game soon. We've also requested another upgrade to the training and youth facilities. Both of those have been approved. So as we go into this game against Galatasaray, whether we end up in the Champions League or the Europa League, it's been a wonderful summer for us and a pretty good one for Welsh football. And this is the team and squad we've gone for today. George Wickens did throw his toys out the pram a bit in the summer, but he's agreed to stay now. Still relying on Ratcliffe as a backup as we couldn't get anyone in. McDonald and Weaver the fullbacks. McDonald staying another season. Still the best player at the club on paper. With John Price and Whitaker starting at centre half, I'm sticking with a tried and trusted relationship rather than throwing a new centre half in for these games. He'll build himself up in the league instead, McKenzie. Lloyd, Broom, Furlong and Wells the midfield diamond. Tom Jones dropping out. He's going to set a league appearance record before this save ends, but he's not going to do it in Europe. Dan Wells is the star man here. And then loads of remorters up front. Probably the area we're lightest now. Duffy and Dean are our backups. They're still very good players. But we've not improved that position like we have the others. And our squad is a little bit weaker there. But let's go and get into it. It's Galatasaray in Turkey. And can we stay in the tight going into the second leg? That's the question we're asking. Let's go and get the answer. It's a very good team. They've gone for a lot of the Turks with the experienced players on the bench. So the likes of Timothy Weir and Odson Edward just sitting there in case they need them. That's the difference between our sides at the minute. We're underdogs. We're going to drop to a balanced mentality and we're going to go and get through it. And touch wood, we can stay in the game because this is a massive moment for our football club and Welsh football. And we've got a corner kick early on with Furlong. Just 90 seconds on the clock. Oh, Lowe's has hit the bar with a header. Almost got a dream goal away in Turkey. But Galatasaray rattled early on and so was their woodwork. But they managed to survive it. And can we afford to miss chances like that? I just don't know. We need a repeat of Leipzig or Porto, don't we? As Weaver's got a throw on the left to Furlong. Plays a 1-2 with him. Gets towards the byline. If he can just get the cross in the box, we've always got three or four in there. Weaver does that. Loza knocks it down for Walters. But the flag's up. VAR will rule it out. It was wishful thinking. It did look off. 10 minutes gone. Still goalless. But it's a Galatasaray free kick. Guello will take it. Oh, outside of the post. Stunning effort. And we get away with one there. We're back with Price as he's playing out from the back to Yesden Weaver. On the left-hand side, just a few minutes to the break. Can we counter again? Furlong picks it up to Wells. Actually, pretty controlled in possession. And that's the benefit of a better midfield. Wonderful ball from Broom. And now Kane Walters as Mr. Sitter. We can't afford to miss chances like this. Simbana's got it for Galatasaray. It's an end-to-end -end match. It's been brilliant to watch. Anderson's got it to Sangare. Tries to switch it. Weaver heads away. Only as far as Livramento. To Coelho. Who's caused some problems on this right wing. Delivers from the front post. Slattery's in. And he's missed a great chance as well. The amount of free chances and free headers at both ends is inexplicable. And somehow it's still nil-nil. As John Price plays it to Whitaker in the centre circle. 
One last chance to get ahead before the break. Walters runs off the defender. Oh, he's hit the post. He's scored 19 goals already this season. But he's bottling it against the big opposition. And we haven't seen that from him yet. As Wells nicks it on the left-hand side. We're continuing to create a stream of chances. Wells goes all the way. And his shot's brilliantly saved too. How have we not scored? And for that fact, how have Galatasaray not scored? What a half of football this has been. Now, the fact that it's goalless is unbelievable, really. Price picks it up as the corner's headed clear. We've got one more chance, really, before the break. He's forced down to the left wing. What's he going to do with it? Goes back to Weaver. It's a very long extended highlight, which suggests something will come from it. Walters gets it left side of the box from the through ball. Into Wells! Not offside this time. Walters turns provider. Dan Wells makes the run. And there's the quality coming together. Don't forget, those boys haven't played together much. But that was a wonderfully worked goal. 1-0 on the stroke of half-time and a crucial away goal in Turkey. Let's get into the second half, try and keep it up and see if we can keep our lead. As we're back just four minutes into the second half, as Galatasaray playing a triangle on the right-hand side. Coelho gets to the byline. His cross is blocked back to the fullback. Now, Coelho was offside there, so he had to leave the through ball and Weaver can bring it away for us. If we can get a second... It might be Champions League football this year. And Kane Walters has got a great chance. Doesn't make a mistake, does he? Yes. Oh, he's put it wide. I was so sure that was going in. I don't know what's happened to him today. Is it nerves? Is it the big game mentality? But it's all gone so wrong. As Broom plays back to Harvey Lloyd on the edge of the box. Lloyd shoots. Nearly catches the keeper out. What a stunning game. I know this episode's going to be a long one now. But the boys have earned it from this performance. I hope you're as entertained as I am watching it. As Broom gets the ball again in midfield. We're playing out nicely. We're keeping it well. We look so authoritative against a really good side. And McDonald plays Wells in again. And Dan Wells. If you doubted he was going to be a good sign-in. He is going to be sublime. What a player he'll be for us in Europe this year. And he might have just got us to the Champions League group stages. And if that can get the finances up 10 million again. We might well be able to up the wage bill and afford players like that in future. As Price plays out to Weaver yet again, into Chris Broom. Back to the centre-half Price. I mean, they're not even really pressing us now. And they've got a lot of the young Turkish players in who are fit, so I'm not sure why they're not. But Whitaker plays into Broom in midfield, to Lozer. He's gone a bit quiet after his positive start, but finds McDonald, who releases him again. Lozer into the box. Is he about to shut me up? Of course he is. Loza delivers, Kane Walters finally scores one. We're in August and he scored 20 goals for the season. It is 3-0 to Bangor City away at Galatasaray. We have arrived everyone. And I fancy us in the group stages to get third now. As Wickens gives it to Whitaker. over an hour on the clock. I mean it's just been an unbelievable performance. McDonald goes long, Walters left in acres of space. Walters rounds the keeper. It's four. We are dismantling Galatasaray like they are a Welsh Premier League team. It is a stunning, stunning display on the road. And if we'd taken our chances, it could have been six or seven here. So back with 15 minutes to go. Three changes pending, ready to be made. It's Morgan coming on for Weaver at left back. Wells dropping into centre midfield with Malone on alongside him. And Tom Jones on as the number 10. Furlong and alongside him, Broom are the two that come off. They're looking a bit tired. Just to freshen us up in the middle. At the moment, though, we're just playing it around. We're playing keep ball, Galatasaray chasing it, and we're waiting for the right opportunity. It is a joy to watch. We have waited 11 years to get to this stage, and as Kai McDonald gets it on the right wing, can we get a fifth and really embarrass them? Broom's final action before he comes off. Delivers the ball into Wells. Wells nearly completes the hat-trick. It's a good save by the Galatasaray keeper. But what a performance it's been. Galatasaray coming forward on the right. We don't want to start conceding here. Because we have struggled at home a bit last season. We lost 2-0 to Porto. We lost to Leipzig. We want to try and get into a position where it's an impenetrable lead. As Loza gets in again, he's put it wide at the post. Not had his shooting boots on today. I mean, neither of the strikers have in truth, despite Walters scoring two. But they can be forgiven because all rounds, they've been absolutely stunning. And we don't look like we're missing Luke Williams or Greg Pringle. The best two strikers we've ever had. As Wells gets it into Patrick Malone. Plays long over the top. Walters left in acres again. Why are Galatasaray playing such a high line? With the two goals, Walters has built his confidence, dinks it into the top corner. It's 5-0. Somebody explain how we are winning 5-0 in Turkey. Either these squad changes have really worked, or Galatasaray are having a big off day, because it could have been six there again. 
and Wells is playing out from the back. It's a wonderful effort. And I don't know what to say. We're seeing a highlight a minute. This is like watching us against one of the, the minnow sides. We're coming back every two minutes. We're having a brilliant attack. And Galatasaray are a top-class team. We've seen some of the players in there. And we're doing this to them. We're completely dismantling them. As Malone gives it to Loza. Can he get in on the act? Shoots from the edge. Just wide of the post. That would have crowned the night for us. But he's been brilliant too. It is Galatasaray nil, Bangor City 5. It finally goes quiet for the last five minutes. But surely that's Champions League football for Bangor City. We'll show the second leg in the next episode anyway. But it's got to be done and dusted now, hasn't it? Well, I can only apologise for the slightly longer episode. But what a performance. What a summer. What an episode. We'll keep an eye on TNS next time. We'll be back for Galatasaray and the end of the Welsh transfer window. We'll keep an eye on what the other clubs are doing because there are some positive signs about there. But if you did enjoy the episode and that brilliant performance and all of the news on and off the pitch, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content. There's links to all the big playlists in the eye above as well as the food channel too. And you can find a link to my Twitch page in the description below where we're going to have a big month of streaming. So please do come and follow along there if you haven't. But a massive thanks for watching and joining me for another season. It was certainly worth it today, wasn't it? What a performance. I'll see you next time to find out if we can back it up.